Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. So before the sun comes out today, we're gonna be feeding our worms. So let me tell you about what I have in here. I have a mixture of eggshells, quail eggs, uh, well, just the shells, tomato pit, bits and pieces I cut off of my tomatoes when I was cooking them, organic apple peels, a little bit of potato. I think there's a piece of bell pepper in here, some squash, cause you know, summertime in Louisiana, everybody has an abundance of squash. So I mixed all of that in here with some coffee grounds that I had already used. All right, remember, in one of the videos my dad tells you, if you're using unbrewed coffee grounds, it's too acidic. But once you brew them, you're good. Just remember this, your worms need to boost every morning like you do. Now, I don't have to feed my worms, my red wigglers, every day. I don't have to do it because I set my beds up in a way that they eat their bedding, okay? Cardboard, paper, newspaper. Um, I put a lot of rabbit manure in there. Leaves out of my yard, grass clippings, cardboard back on the top, cardboard on the bottom. Guys, eventually they're gonna eat all of that. I mean, like it's an amazing roughage for them, okay? So the eggshells are important, guys. Some people put like, you know, a little bit of sand oyster shell, whatever, whatever you can get into your hands. I'll tell you that, use what you have, but know this about a red wiggler. Know this about any worm. They are like chickens. They have gizzards, okay? No teeth. So occasionally you're gonna have to give them something that's a bit gritty that they can eat. That's going to help them process and break down the rest of the foods that they're eating. We have almost zero waste at this point with like um, organic biodegradable products, especially food that goes into landfills off of our property. I'm not throwing away cardboard anymore. I use it, I use it for everything. Newspaper, um, paper mail that we get, we just, you know, go through the shredder with all of that. Remember, take the plastic out of the windows in those little envelopes, guys. It is a big problem when you shred it and you've got little teeny tiny bits of plastic that you then have to pick out of your worm bed. They're not gonna eat the plastic, they can't. So it's just gonna keep resurfacing to the top of your bed and that's cool, you just pick it out, throw it away. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to easily care for your worms this morning. Why? Like a lot of people are like, I don't even wanna watch that. Like, what does this have to do with homesteading? This has a lot to do with homesteading. This is part of that sustainable closed loop system I keep talking about that I'm striving for, that my husband is striving for. Guys, the prices of fertilizers, of soil amendments has gone through the roof. I see so many people on sites going, I went and bought, you know, 20 packs of um, 50 pound black cow manure and I bought this and I bought that. A lot of that you could be making. Now, I know a lot of you work and that's not a possibility, but it's gonna get to a point that you're working to pay for your garden. So at some point you're gonna have to balance out the things in your life and get things back into order. And one of the easiest, simplest steps to take control of your garden and cut a big part of your inputs for your garden out is creating a home worm bin. Our forefathers knew this. Back in the day, everybody had a, a, like a compost pile in the back where you could go get worms to go fishing. Now that's, that's one way, all right? A lot of people feel like they have to go and they have to purchase these really, really expensive worm bins. You don't have to do that either. So I had a video up called setting up a new worm bin and the tip to my dad's homemade feed. I had to take it down, say I've got another copyright claim. Remember the little cups I hold up in the video showing you how to make like bait cups? Well, the name of the cup showed and they copyrighted it. So until I have time to fix those little edits and get it back up on my page, I decided to do another quick little video for you guys on feeding your worms and just a real quick run through on how we set up our beds. It's not that difficult, guys. I might spend one to two hours a week and seven days in this worm bin, okay? I don't have to, they're self-sufficient. They are an amazing part of a closed loop system and I hope that your worms will bless you like mine have blessed Okay, you're just gonna take your lid off and you're just gonna shake it a little bit and pour you a pile of food right there, just like that. Look at that little worm. 
Little does he know, oh, he does know, I promise you, that I just dumped breakfast. You see how he's up on that leaf? This is why my dad and I keep, you keep hearing the words moist. Everything needs to be moist because they're 90% water, guys. Okay, they breathe through their skin. So if they dry out, if they get on a dry leaf and get stuck, they're going to die. You're gonna kill your population. All right, let's cover this bed up and let's feed the other I side. I keep seeing a lot of posts by people saying, help, my, my worms are overheating. How do I cool my worms down? I am in Southeast Louisiana, July of 2022. Okay, Louisiana now. Remember what I said? We've been hitting 100 plus temps for a minute. Look at that. Can you see it? Right there, guys. Look at the temperature of this bed. It won't get past at the most 85 degrees, maybe 90 in the middle of August, but it usually won't even do that. How can I control the temperatures in my beds like this? One, I do have it in a building, but this building, it's got a high roof, it has no insulation. All right, it gets very, very hot in here. I don't do fans, I don't do ice. My beds are very long, look at that, okay? so. What we have here is a very long bed, all this reusable materials. The bed stops in the middle right here. So this is one side, this is one side. It's very, very wide mouth, very long, very deep. <clears throat> Excuse me. It has cardboard on the bottom to absorb any of the runoff from the worms. All right, so that cardboard on top, it has plastic look how good and moist my plastic is i'm not losing any of my moisture all right so my moisture is going up it's dripping back down it's controlling the temperature of this bed for me it's in the shade even though the inside of the shop is 100 degrees my bed my bed will be anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees less than that all right and that's i keep this right here all right that's not telling me what the temperature and deep in the bed is, and it's cooler down here. When you get through all that, get through the grass. Look at the worms. You see them? Look at that. I have very large beds. My worms like to move around. I give them that space for a reason. If I put the wrong food, if the moisture level changes to too wet or too dry, my worms can, can move. They can migrate across this bed to an area that is more stable and more suitable for them. So you guys remember that. These right here, I might get a copyright claim for this. Who knows? <laughs> that right there did not work for me. Let me tell you guys why. All the material packed down to the bottom down here, okay? And it became like compressed with almost no good smell to it at all. all right, I just filled it with compost and worms. It was terrible, terrible. Like uh, it was so hot inside of that, the worms were trying to escape. You, do you see any worms trying to escape? Look at that. No worms trying to escape out of here. Why? Because it's a perfect, it's a perfect setup for them. We've been doing it this way for two years. They convert this entire bed in less than two and a half, three months. And you guys, there's another video on how to run your worm castings out that Papa Sammy and I did. So let's get to feeding them. If my worms have bedding that they eat as food, as well as rabbit manure in these beds, why am I also feeding them? Well, because I told you earlier, I need to make sure I get grit for their gizzards and I need to make sure that they have a balanced meal but i also want to give them that little boost two or three times a week of their coffee guys come on everybody loves coffee so let's get these worms fed when i come out and check on my worm bin and i pull back my plastic we talked about that this plastic acts as a moisture barrier to trap water as the water rises out of the bed right rides up hits the plastic i mean the cardboard goes to the cardboard hits the plastic it drips back on my cardboard okay now this is not wet this one's super moist but that's okay that's okay keep telling y'all that people make things so difficult out of fear don't be afraid guys don't be afraid get in there the only way you're gonna learn is to do all right so this is the bed that we set up you can see all the worms in there look how happy these guys are okay 
you know you're doing something right. When you pull back, it's nice, moist, not wet. Cardboard again on the bottom. All of this is their bedding as well as their food. All right. I think the biggest thing to remember when you wanna create a worm bed is what do you have on hand to create it? I see a lot of people purchasing, every time something new comes out in the worm world, everybody runs out and buys it. I personally, to this day, and neither has my father, had a lot of great success in the top multiple level down towers. The garbage pan towers, all of that guys. Whoever designed those did not take into consideration heat, pressure, airflow, it's not enough. You need to mimic in, in every livestock that you're raising, all right? You need to mimic its natural habitat as much as possible. In other words, like in my chicken coop, we deep mulch for several reasons, right? Because we're trying to give them a more natural habitat. With the worms, we're trying to give them a more natural habitat. I've seen a lot of people talk about, you know, I put a lot of peat moss, uh, the coconut stuff. My worms aren't thriving. Well, that's because that's really not a natural habitat for them. You can add those things in and be successful with it. A lot of people have found what works for them, okay? So that is your tip today. Find out what works for you. Remember a couple of things. Bedding is food, okay? Their bedding that you're setting up in their bin to get them to jumpstart is their food. All right, use as many materials as you can, but what we have found to be successful at Starkey Farmstead and what Papa Sammy has found to be successful is less worms in smaller containers like gallon, uh, I'm sorry, the big, the big totes, big five gallon totes. You can use those with holes in the top, of course, successfully with maybe a pound, pound and a half of worms. That's it. If you want more worms, you need a big, build bigger beds like what I have, okay? What I just showed you, just a big bed. And then figure out how in your climate can you keep moisture in it if it's damp, if it's moist, not wet, all right? You saw there was, it looked pretty crispy still in places, right? If you can do that, you can help them regulate their own temperatures. Do not put your worm beds in direct sunlight. If you put them in plastic, anything plastic, guys, all right? Think about that in this heat. What is that gonna do? It's gonna cook them. You're literally going to cook them. So you're gonna have to rethink the type of, of container that you have your worms in, all right? You might need to go to a wood like we're using. I told y'all in another video, my wood was treated. So I ran Bisqueen up and over it to keep my worms away from it and so that no toxic chemicals leach back into my castings. So you guys have a blessed day. I hope that this helped. Please like, subscribe, and comment.